Hey there, I'm back, in for another tutorial. So in this tutorial, I'll go over uh, how to do constants again. And I'll also go over some cool tricks and how to make functions. So, getting in. So we use the define keyword. And the define is actually uh, not called a function. It ha it's called a special form because you don't evaluate all of its arguments. And I will cover that later. So let's define, like, person name. And in Racket, it's a convention to use the dash or variable names. So I would say, um, for example, let's write um, my name. So here we have a string. So you declare strings like this. And this will be mapped to person name. Now let's make a, a person name. Let's call it person first person. Uh, let's call it a uh, standard person, actually. And now let's have another. Um, let's have a method that compares um, that returns standard person. So define person name, uh, person name, and we can just do it like that. Person name, and here we can do uh, standard person. Now notice what happened. I had no parameters in this, so I just called person name and it returns this. This actually becomes a constant then. Since you have nothing returning, since all functions return value, you can't have anything like void. And you can't have no parameters. If you have no parameters, then it becomes a constant. So let's have one that, um, let's have another method that adds two numbers. So we can write define sum xy and something in here. Now, this might be confusing, but we use the define keyword again. Here, this is the identifier of the function, and here we place the parameters. So inside the parameters here, we have an x and a y. Now, this is dynamically typed, meaning that the variables don't actually have something like in Java where you would write int. No, you should simply have x and y. And here we put the ellipses here to indicate a block of code that is not visible right now. So, uh, inside here, we will do the method definition inside the method definition we will have something that uses these variables and we will use prefix notation like we did before we will add x and y and we have this right, right here and let's click run and see what happens so we have this right now and now we can just do some sum of 2 3 and it should return 5 now an important thing to know is that when you first run of the racket, you will notice that some text is black, and that means that you never actually used that section of code before. Uh, whenever you're evaluating functions, if it is not in the most simplest form, so for example, 5 is the most simplest form, right? But sum of 2 and 3, that's not the simplest form, because you can still further evaluate this item. So you have to surround it in brackets. So now you have this. We have the prefix notation here. We have the method definition here. And we're using the define keyword. Uh, let's try to do something a little bit more. Another example. So uh, we can have um, we can have a uh, 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 kilometers to meters, and you can place these funky symbols here. Let's convert kilometers to meters. So in order to convert a kilometer to a meter, you multiply kilometers by one thousand. Right, but let's do a constant. Let's define meters in kilometers because there is 1000, right? So let's just not have magical numbers all over the place and let's use constants. Let's run this and see what happens. So now if I do kilometers to meters of one, it returns 1000. Works. So this is very cool. And there's a very interesting um, feature of Racket. And if you've ever been familiar with unit tests before, you can actually just check to see if the code works inside your code. And I'll be go going over that in the next tutorial. But this is basically an introduction of how to declare functions, how to use the parameter passes, and a little bit more. An important thing to note is that, let's say I define another x variable here and declare it as 10. Now notice there's an x here and there's also an x here. That's the idea of scope, basically. The scope, if I do sum of 1 and 2, it will still 
return 3 because this has a higher precedence over this. Constants, these are global, so any, if any function can view these, but in the sense of it being black boxed, um, you can only see this in here. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and stay tuned for the next video where, where I will cover unit texting and many more functions. Thanks for watching.